What we're going to talk about today are uh, two main things, uh, things that we've been working on in the Membership Ninjas group for the last uh, couple of weeks, especially. And the very first one is going to be um, progress tracking for inside of ClickFunnels. And then the other one is going to be a bunch of bookmark lists that I just gave out to all of my members that they can use to make working with ClickFunnels a lot faster and a lot easier. So um, you saw this uh, a couple of weeks ago, probably. I started working on how can we do progress tracking? You know, most all the other sites, whether it's Kajabi, Thinkific, whatever it is, doesn't matter. They all have some ability to be able to click on a button that says mark is complete. And then when you do that, it'll give you a little green check mark down here next to your lesson, wherever your lessons are on your page. And as you see here, as you come into the site, you got up here at the top, you have different badges. And this whole idea comes from the training by Catherine Jones, the CF Design School, where as you go through the training, as you complete certain projects, and you're basically going in and design hacking other sites. So you're either cloning other sites, or you're taking a site that you found, and you're improving upon it. And every time you do one of these tasks, you put in, you submit to get a new badge. And then I'm assuming that somebody manually uh, ticks off that you got that badge. And then when you, the next time you log back into the site, you will see you have that badge. Now her badges are much more elaborate just for the sake of figuring out how to do this. I, of course, just made it very simple, just made some icons. And as you got the badge, that icon would turn red. So in this play, in this case here, I have signified that this person has two badges. And then also because of that, we're doing a point system in here. And so we got 20 points on this. And this is 100% dynamic. And when the person is done working on this today, and they leave, they log out, or even if their power goes out, the computer dies suddenly, it will all be saved. All this information will be saved. And so the next time they come in, they'll see exactly exactly where they are in their progress. They're going to see their badges. They're going to see the progress that they have gone through so far. So in this case here, they got 20 points. I'm giving 10 points each per badge. And then you're going to see here is as they go through the lessons, and we have a total of 12 lessons in here set up. As they go through the lessons, they will get one additional point for every lesson that they go through. So here we have our lesson that we're on, and it's going to look familiar to most people who have been in any other sites, you know, whether it's uh, Kajabi or Thinkific or a Members Pro or any of them, they all have a button somewhere that says something similar to mark as completed. And in this case here, we're going to click on that button. And when we click on it, a couple of things happen. You have this small little check mark here that's grayed out. That's going to get bigger and turn green. And we're going to see that right there. We're going to then go to 21 points from the 20 we were at. And then you saw here our progress bar is starting to move over a little bit. And this changed to 8% complete. Now, if I click on completed again, it will actually turn this off. So you can tog uh, toggle any of the lessons on and off. So we toggled that off right there. We went back to zero. 20 and no check mark. So we can turn that back on and then we can click on our next lesson. Actually, I don't have the turned on on this one. I have it turned on on the other one. Um, so we go click on the next lesson. We can mark this as complete. We go to 17%, click on one more and we go to 25% and 23 points. And then let's say for some reason you said, okay, I want to rem remind myself the next time I come back in to uh, look at lesson number two again. You just uncheck that, and then also the check mark goes away, reminding you you have not done that uh, that lesson yet. So that's it. Pretty simple. So now again, like I said, when somebody logs out and they come back in. What they're going to see when they come back in is what they see on the screen right here right now. If their computer were to die suddenly right now they would come back in and see exactly what they're seeing on the screen right here because it is on the fly dynamic. And every time anything is clicked on the page, it automatically saves all the data so that it's always going to be there when the person comes back in. So here is a Kajabi clone that I built. And in this Kajabi clone, then everything hopefully is working right. So as we are on lesson number one here, we are going to mark this as complete. There we go. Thank you very much. And we get our little green check mark. Now we can click on our next button. We will go to the next lesson here, signified by the dark print, and we can mark that as complete. We can also click here 
and mark that as complete and just keep going down the line. And then of course, let's say you want to say this one, number two here was not complete and we will click on that and we will uncheck it so that you remember to come back in later and watch that video again. And of course, down here we can accordion all of our lessons our sections if we would like, and then you can also scroll up and down and check them out. And of course, you can scroll up and down over here as well. And of course, like I said, I put in my previous next as well. So now let's go and see what does this look like in mobile view. So here we are in mobile view. And again, you can scroll up and down on the content just fine. I have the complete and the left um, previous next here as well. So let's go to the next one here. We can mark this as complete and you didn't see it do it because the, uh, the navigation of course is hidden. So we click on our hamburger bun and now we see that here. And again, we can scroll up and down and we can click on this next lesson. We see the lesson content. We can mark that as complete and we can come back and forth. And if you're in here and you wanna get back out, you can click on the top bar, or you can click on the content, or you can even click on the next lesson and it'll take you to that next lesson as well. And of course, all this in content in here is just dummy content as I'm building this stuff out. So now here's what I was working on with another student of mine. Uh, so this one here, we built for a student. Every, everything basically at this point, I'm helping students build out, coming up with ideas, building all kinds of crazy stuff to basically look like whatever you want. So here's something um, he's building out for his gym. And what he wanted was just the static bar across the top and then a menu over here. And you see, as we click on the menu, the uh, little arrows, they flip over and then it opens up the menu section. And then of course you can come in here and check out whatever you want, of course. And we can open this up big enough. And once you get large enough, then you can open it up as a scroll. So we can scroll up and down on it as well. And we can open and close the menu. Now we have not built out the mobile on this yet, but the mobile is basically going to be a bar across the top, like you saw here, black bar with the hamburger bun. We'll take out the the word menu here, you'll just have the, the hamburger bun and it'll slide on and off just like you had in the Kajabi clone here. So it's gonna look very similar to that. And you're gonna see as we go forward, um, a lot of stuff, you know, whether it's Kajabi here, let's go back to regular, this is pretty much full width on the page. It's not quite there because we have uh, the sidebar, but in this case here, we're almost 100% full width on the page. And I'll show you a, bookmark that I have to help with that going forward. In fact, why don't I just show that to you right now, because that's where we're going to go now to is start looking at the bookmark list that we have. So I'll kind of reverse the order that I was going to do it in. And so here we have our bookmarklets or here we have a membership area and let's go into a lesson. And you're going to see here, normally as you're building out your lessons, they're really skinny. But as you saw over here, this is full, full width page. So what I did is I built in a little bookmarklet and it's going to slowly load up. There we go. Built in a little bookmarklet where we click on this. And what it does is it takes us to 100% width on the page. So we can see what this is going to look like, two, three columns, whatever you want, how it's going to look when you build it out over here. And, um, and it, actually in this case here, like I think about it, this is actually the content column. And then this is like a sidebar column he built in. So this, you would not necessarily have to build in hundred percent width, but you certainly could, you could certainly build out all your templates, uh, right here in hundred percent with multiple columns and anything else that you wanted. So let's back out of here. Now, another issue is when you come into your membership areas, a lot of times you'll say, um, in order to preview the page, so you come here, you want to preview the page, you got to go into the editor and then click on preview. Well, of course, I didn't like that because it's too many steps. And so I just built myself a button, uh, another bookmarklet up here, you click on it and it will take you to the preview of that membership area, as you see right there. And then let me see, I got another here, one here for lessons, but I'm not going to show you that one. That, that one actually I'm keeping just for, just for my students. I don't want anybody to even know what that one does. I mean, you know, you think dude, that's crazy, but um, there's a reason for it. And um, let me see here. The only other one we have here really to show you for memberships is a lot of times as I'm building out a membership to test stuff real quickly, 
I'll forget to put in a login button like we have right there. And so I just built a simple little bookmarklet that you come in here and you click on it and member log out and it just logs you out of your site and uh, gets you back to the access page. So you can continue testing going in and out of the sites to uh, test all the different functionality. So now let's take a look at the, uh, the ones that I really think are the coolest. In fact, I'll show you one that's less cool here. Just where is it here? Okay, so products. Okay, now a lot of people are using CF Pro Tools, Jamie stuff, and a lot of times you gotta go in and you gotta grab your product IDs. And so what we did here is we said here, show product ID. So all you gotta do is come and click on that. And here is your product ID right there. So that's a nice little hack. Now here, um, what we're going to do is let me just show you this. We can come in here and we can say, show the name. So a lot of times I'm in a funnel. You get a couple of them that look the same, especially if you're, you know, you built one and then you built another. It's pretty much a clone of it. You kind of sometimes go, oh, okay, which one am I in? So I just put this in here and now it shows up here, the show a squeeze page, which is the name. Now what I want to do and why I showed you this now is because with the product IDs, if this were a sales page, an order form page with products on it, what I want to do eventually is to be able to then append all of the product IDs right up here at the top. So as you're taking Jamie's code and you're putting it into like a custom JavaScript HTML box, you can just come up here, copy, paste, copy, paste into that box of, um, so you can just easily, very easily grab your product IDs right out of here. Haven't gotten that one done yet. Uh, let me see here, a couple other things. Uh, we might as well do that before I show you the really cool stuff. So in here, so this is a button and uh, some of the actions you can set for a button is you can go hide show and you click on this and it's really skinny. Okay. And that really drove Andrea, one of my members nuts. And so I built this for her. Uh, so now we click on the hide show and we click on it again and boom, there it is really nice and wide. So you can come in, you can very easily read, especially if you put data titles on everything, you can easily read what each one of the elements is. So you know which ones you want to hide and show and oh, editor top bar. Let's uh, we'll click on that one. Okay. Sometimes if you're doing um, fixed positioning or absolute positioning, the content on the page will actually go up behind this bar, this uh, dark bar at the top. So by turning on this bookmarklet, you can take your content and you can pull it down on the page so you can see it because on a lot of stuff I'll build. So, well, we can't see that one anymore. So, um, so let's say here. Yeah. In fact, this was, this was one of them that prompted it, um, right up here at this top, this little skinny bar would come in here and hide behind this bar right here. And so I couldn't work on it. I couldn't even get to it. So I did this to be able to pull this out of the way. And of course, everything still works on it as it had before. So let me push that back up to the top and just leave it there. And then let me see here, this one. Um, okay, let me do this. Let me add in a two-step uh, two order form. We'll pop this in here. Come on, baby. There you go. So we have two-step order form. And a lot of times you want to see step number two as you're working on step number one. And so there we go. We will show step number two. And so there's another nice little one that we use all the time when you're working on that kind of a form. But here's the really cool stuff, okay? And uh, well, let me just show you where the problem is. So here we are in ClickFunnels. I just clicked on custom CSS. And you see that this box is pretty small and the background behind it is super dark. So if I click on this, it kicks us out. Uh, same thing here. Let's just go to tracking code. And again, very small box. It opens it into the header code, which normally you're going to be in the footer code. And again, um, the background in here isn't quite as dark, but it doesn't really matter so much to the JavaScript because the JavaScript does not change on the page. As you type in the JavaScript, you're not going to see changes, but as you're typing in your custom CSS, you can actually see what's changing behind here. So it'd be really nice if you could see that. Well, the first uh, version of this I built for our CSS now, opens it up, the box is much bigger, and the background is much lighter. So if I were to come in here and take out this comment, we can see now the CSS kicks in, and it gave us this red background section right there. So let me take that back out. 
And so this, this box is right here in the middle. And so you can see it, but, and you can resize it too. I mean, that's part of the reason why I built this was to be able to resize it. Well, the problem is, is what if you got an, you know, about this big, so you can see the code you're working on and whatever you're working on is right here. Well, the simplest thing is then to just move it out of the way. So we move this over here and of course you can then still resize it and do whatever you would like with it. Okay. So I did that exact same thing with uh, the tracking code as well. And so when you click on the tracking code, it turns off the CSS. And the reason why it does that is because I have it set that way because the CSS and the tracking code both use the same element. It's a mirroring element and what it does is if you leave them both open, so if I had the CSS open, I turned on the tracking code in the CSS, it completely wipes everything out and just turns the background white, it just turns it white and all the code is gone. So there's no reason to have it open anyway. So I just have to swap those two out like that. And then if we have a custom JavaScript HTML box, we can open this up and then we can either click here to open it up. But again, kind of dark, kind of limiting on what you can do, or you can use the bookmarklet and you can do it there and you can move it around. Now, one of the problems though is uh, I've been using a lot more of the custom JavaScript HTML boxes lately, a lot more than the tracking code. And what I started to say to myself was, man, it'd be really nice if I could be able to leave these boxes open and be able to save the page. That's where this really started was wanting to leave this here and save the page. Cause normally you got to click here and then you got to come up and click on save in order to, uh, save it. And then you click on preview and then you got to come back in and you got to click here and click and, and it's all this different clicking. So what I decided to do was let's open up. This is the newer version of my CSS and let's just take our CSS and we'll just move it up over here to, to the left, just to kind of get it out of our way. And we can shrink it down here some, and then let's say, Oh, I want to save this now. I don't want to close my CSS box, but I want to save the page. I can just click on the page now and I can click on save and it will save the page. And then I can click on preview if I wanted to preview it. And also I can click on anything else I want in here. So here we have section rows, columns, so I can open up the section and we can look at this. We can come in. We could even go as far as coming down and changing out our data title. Now in this case here, I changed out this data title to test section. So it's this whole top section here. I called that test section because we're gonna do a little bit. Well, you already saw it, I guess. Uh, when I turned the background blue, this is the data title right there. I'm sorry, red. Uh, that's the data title right there to turn the C use the CSS to turn the background on this red. Well, now what I also wanna do is I want to leave the custom CSS box open. And like I said, I'm sorry, the, yeah, the custom CSS box, but I also want to open up the custom JavaScript box at the same time. So I clicked on it. And the reason why you have to click on it is because you may have multiple custom JavaScript HTML boxes on your page. So you need to know which one you're targeting. So in this case here, I clicked on this and now I'm going to come up and I'm going to click on my bookmarklet. And now here we have the bookmarklet on the page and I can move this anywhere I want to. So let me just size this down. Let's leave it wide enough so we can see that content. And let's just say we want it over here. And now what we can do is again, we can come in and we could click on something like this, open up our, our ID selector, our data title right there. We could do that. We can come into our section again. We can open up our section. And of course we can do anything we want in here. We can change the background color. Let's change it to yellow and then we'll come down and then we can again open up and see the ID selector and the data title, which again, I use data titles almost exclusively now because as I'm building templates that I can then give to my students, it's a lot easier to have them use data titles versus using the ID selector, which is going to change all the time. If you create a data title, it doesn't matter what the ID selector is. It's a lot easier to target things, especially multiple objects at the same time. So we can do that. And again, so we have both of these boxes open. So let's say we're coming along and I want to in this, uh, this row here, oops, I managed to turn this thing back on. That's the only problem with this one here is once you turn it on it, it, uh, if you click on something, it wants to move around. Um, but you won't be, you know, you 
barely be using that one because again, it's not that often that you're using absolute positioning and everything is flying up to the top of the page. Um, so here we got row, we're going to manage this and let's just go to this, this first row and actually let's go here and let's change the name of this. Let's go here to test row and we will copy that and let, is, let us update that. Now let's come over to our CSS and instead of test section, let's make this test row and let's take that out. So now this row is red, but now let's do, okay, let's leave this, let's leave this one down here alone. So we got a different data title down here now. So we got data title of test section and we're going to use an attribute of style this time. We could use CSS, uh, but I wanted to use an attribute. I like it better. I like using the attributes better, mostly because you can't use the important tag in a, a CSS method. You can only use important tag in an attribute method. And so we're going to do that. And then let's take this out. So the point of what I'm showing here is I can come in, I can change my data title, put it into my CSS, put it into my custom JavaScript and never have to close any of these boxes. And now we can come over and we can click on save. And then we're going to click on preview. And then uh, we should have everything set as is. You saw there at first, this background area was yellow. Because it, took a, it took a second for the uh, JavaScript to kick in. So it started off with the yellow here because that's how we have it set on the page, but then we changed it to blue. But as the page loads, it's going to load first the CSS that is built into the editor. Then it will load the CSS built into the custom CSS and then it will run your custom JavaScript. So that's why a lot of times with these ClickFunnels pages, especially the membership areas, I actually have a slight delay on them so that the screen doesn't show until the entire page is loaded or until certain parts of the page are loaded that I know, <coughs> excuse me, that are gonna be changing around as, as we're going through and running all the different code. So I like to do that, but the, man, you saw an example of it right there. In fact, let's just reload the uh, page in order to see that again. So it should come in, unless of course it's been cached. Okay, you saw it there for a second. Came in as yellow and then turned to blue. And of course we had this red because we changed that in the CSS. So, so now I have one more I'm going to show you here and we're going to take a look at this. This is one I was working with on another member in the site, in, in my membership ninjas. The student is, runs some sort of a journaling thing. And what they want to do is daily journaling prompts. So when somebody logs into the membership area, all they're going to see today is March 26th. And uh, all they're going to see on their page is their journaling prompts for March 26th. That's it. There is no navigation. There is no nothing else. You get what you got on March 26th, and that's all you get. And again, this is all built 100% into ClickFunnels. And so they come in on the 26th, they see what their assignment is, they do it or they don't do it, or if they don't come in on the 26th, on the 27th, it's gone. On the 27th, this will say March 27th, they'll have a completely new stuff here, new training, new video, new prompts, whatever it looks like in this case here be completely different stuff. And so um, this is uh, this, I originally developed this for the whole idea of doing a challenge funnel, uh, whereas everybody comes in. So you got like a five day challenger, 30 day challenger, whatever. Somebody comes in and each day they get new content, new content, new content. Well, we kind of took it to, you know, a whole different level here. And we said, okay, you know, 365 days a year. Um, that's what the student said uh, she wanted. So 365 days a year, you can just uh, come in here and she's going to have specific stuff for that day. And I questioned her on the whole thing. And she said, well, how's going to work is every month there's going to be like a different subject matter. So March is going to be about whatever. Uh, I mean, this is journaling. So I think she said one of the topics is, is uh, dealing with grief dealing with loss. So maybe March is about journaling about dealing with loss of a loved one. And so that's what we're going to have this month. So we don't want people coming in and going through the normal process where you would normally uh, on any membership site and you drip out the content, you come in and on day one, you have a certain lesson and on day two and everybody goes through that exact same path here. 
whenever you sign up, you come in, every single person now is going to get this for March 26th. So um, Andrea refers to it as a cohort model, or basically is where all the people in the group are going through and consuming the content at exactly the same time. And so this is a perfect way to be able to do it. You get one thing on one day, and that is it. I do believe that is everything I wanted to show you today. So again, those are all things we've been working on in Membership Ninjas. If you are at all interested in Membership Ninjas and building membership sites, either for yourself or for clients, uh, most of my students, well, I'd probably say it's about 50-50. About 50-50 on my students, half of them are building stuff for themselves. Half of them are building stuff for their clients. And I can tell you right now, based upon the price I have it at now. And even when I increase my price again in, uh, I'm going to increase the price in about three weeks. Um, even, even at that price, you can easily make back your money on just one membership site build. Okay. So, I mean, it's really relatively cheap. And part of my thing is, and I actually enjoy it. Uh, part of my thing is getting in there and working with my students and being able to help them to build out their sites for their clients as well. So get membership ninjas.com is where you go to get signed up for early bird access. Again, get membership ninjas.com. I'll drop a link below. So if you're interested in that, go there, sign up for the early bird list. It will then take you into the free version of membership ninjas and there's a bunch of free training in there go in there check it out there's a bunch of examples of other stuff we've already built check it out there and then when the cart opens probably next week um, you'll definitely be notified and then if you want to jump in um, I would love to have you here, love to have you, um, help you, help you build out some sites for your clients, for yourselves. And, uh, like I said, um, you should be able to make your money back relatively quickly if you really dive in and get to work on it. So, uh, as always, any questions, just let me know. And now I'm going to turn this off. Wish you all a great weekend and, uh, see you next week.